Hey there, I have over 150 Sega Saturn games, some of the best RPGs ever made of all times. And you know what my favorite game is for such a great classic system? Well, I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I do the review of Elevator Action Returns for the Sega Saturn. Second Opinion Games. So let me walk you through the game so you could just see how awesome it is. First thing I do is put in a quick code so I could give myself more bombs, which is left, right, left, right, A, B, C, B. You hear a woman moan or something like that, as if they don't moan enough, am I right? And then when you go into options, you can adjust the lives up to four and give yourself like 50 bombs, which is pretty cool and trust me you'll see that in a little bit then we enter the game and there's three playable characters there's the medium character that isn't really good for too much the female character which is super great eye candy even though she is very small in stature and then there's the tank which is by far the best character but I'm going to show you all of them in time. Basically, every time you continue, you can pick a different character. So I'm going to start with the girl, I'll move to the medium one, and then I'll check out the big beast of the guy. And start the game. So we're in a skyscraper, and your goal here is to go through all the orange doors, start at the very top, and work your way to the bottom. Super easy. At this point, you notice that the graphics are good, your character is very well animated, and beautiful, because we picked the female. And you can still tell she's beautiful, even though it's very, very small and pixelated. So, we enter, and there's awesome gunfire sounds. Everything just moves really well. You can run by double tapping the forward button, the A button shoots, B button throws your bombs. In this case, she throws a fire grenade, so really sets people ablaze. And that's it. That's that's the whole game. You can jump a little bit here and there and just run. Now be careful because the elevators can crush you, and if you fall down even a single store in the elevator shaft, you are dead. And lives are very important in this game because we're not going to have a whole lot of continues here. But don't worry, we'll play through the game easy enough. And when we reach the bottom, well, then a creeper van picks us up. Oh, <laughs> those creepers. And get ready to start level two. So then we start level two by crashing our helicopter into a fully functional airport. Heck yeah, why not? As we move through it, you'll see that tons of guys in jetpacks attack us, which that's when I unload with my bombs, just throwing them around as much as I possibly want and watching them catch a blaze. Now with the fire in this game, you don't have to worry about it at all. It only hurts our enemies. So, don't be afraid to use the crap out of it. Eventually, we go inside of an airplane even, and I think the transition here is pretty cool, where then we get ambushed by tons more guys. Now, you can adjust how far you throw your grenades. If you're ducking, you throw them just right beside you. If you're standing up, you give it a heck of a heave-ho and throw it all the way across the screen. Sometimes not even on the screen you're on. So, in this case, we move all the way to the right and keep our right side covered with firebombs because it kills people almost instantly and keep our left covered with gunfire. Then all we have to do is continue moving up through the airport where our lead villain laughs at us maniacally and speaks a couple words in English, mind you, even though this is a Japanese exclusive game. So level three is your standard skyscraper level where you take the elevators going up continuously and make sure you go through the orange doors. And did somebody order a girl in a box? Heck yeah. So also be very careful on this level. Sometimes I lose track of the elevators and they end up coming down on my character, crushing me to death. Which is a common way for me to die, unfortunately, because sometimes I get a little distracted by all the pretty things that are going on around me. There's not too much to say through this level. It is really fun, but there's nothing that really stands out here. 
Except, of course, for at the very, very top of the level where your helicopter is waiting for you, and then it gets firebombed, and all of these guys ambush you, and the lead enemy taunts you once again. But eventually, you do kill all of them, especially with your firebombs, and then you are rescued off the top of the building, and we're ready to start the next level. So the next level here, level four, we drop into the subway system in the most crazy way possible. Also on this level, our girl finally kicks the bucket. So we pick our long blonde hair, media the road character. Now my favorite thing about him is of course his grenades. They are pretty awesome at clearing an entire floor full of people. So don't be afraid to use them often. After all, we did put in the code for extra bombs. And we start moving our way through the level, and this level is over in only about four minutes. So we do see some extra characters in here, especially these ones that fly around the screen and shoot at us and drop time bombs everywhere. This is really one you should probably either run through or take your time a little bit. Either way, it'll be over quickly, and then you'll be rescued by your friends in a helicopter, dropping you off at the next level. So then we start the oil drilling level. You're dropped off in an oil rig, and you basically have to work your way down to the whole thing until eventually you explode it all. So in this level, the body count is upped significantly. Also, there are lasers protecting certain parts of the level, and there is this tricky elevator shaft with a about five different elevators moving up and down and sometimes they're out of sync so you have to jump across them and it's kind of cool to see these new features this light in the game also our medium the road character finally dies allowing us to play as the freaking tank here who has a different type of grenade the proximity mine well they work great for blowing up regular people however the robot adversaries they don't set off the proximity mine at all so just keep that in mind also your handgun is a desert eagle so you're gonna have some ultimate stomping power no end boss at the end of this level, you just drop out the bottom and cruise away in a motorboat. And heck yeah, it's over. On to the very last level of the game. So then we end up at the enemy's evil underground lair. And this one is extremely difficult. Thank God, because it's the last level of the game. And they really up the ante. There are enemies everywhere. There are bomb traps set everywhere. And there's also electricity guarding tons of different spots. Be very careful not to be crushed by more elevators or fall down the shafts themselves. And this is where you start feeling the burn. As in, you have no idea whether or not you're actually gonna make it out of here alive or beat the end boss or even see the end boss so really start playing very carefully here and then when we finally do make it to the halfway point in this level you'll find out that the self-destruct sequence was initiated or the rocket launcher sequence I'm not really quite sure here so then you have to work your way up a massive tower just destroying everything in sight, just to come to our end boss, the man in red, where he's a little bit of a pushover. Just go up and down the elevator and shoot him. When you run out of machine gun ammo, then just switch to your bombs and kill him dead. And then it's over, very abruptly. And that's the whole game, or almost the whole game, but for our sake, that's the entire game and I really love playing it and I will play it again and again completely loving it every single time so remember when I said two seconds ago that it wasn't the whole game well guess what you just opened up for beating the game the classic elevator action so let's take a look at it so now a new menu opened up at the beginning of the game where it just says old. If you go into that, you find the classic elevator action game. And when it starts up, you see our lead character shoot a grappling hook down to the top of a tower and scooch his way down. This is a really cool thing to add. The complete full arcade version of elevator action, even though the game really sucks, especially with the one-hit kills and the controls that don't feel as precise as the game you just played, but thank goodness they added in. 
So I had an absolutely great time playing Elevator Action Returns. It's also two-player co-op, so if you have a friend, please just light them up, blow up everyone, set everyone on fire, fall down an elevator shaft or two, or maybe even get smashed by an elevator. This is my favorite Sega Saturn game because of the awesome action adventure, and it's fast. You could beat the whole game in less than a half hour. So just keep playing and playing again. You'll get better every single time. And I love seeing the cutscenes, the girls, the music, and pretty much everything about this game. The only thing I would add is maybe a couple more end bosses, but overall, this is a perfect arcade experience on your Sega Saturn, and it is certainly one you should not pass up, even though it is painfully expensive nowadays. So please, just find it any way, shape, or form you can, even if it means stealing it from your best friend. So that is just my opinion, and thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, I had a great time making it, especially because Elevator Action is my favorite Sega Saturn game, and I have a ton of Sega Saturn games. So that should say something about the game itself, it is a ton of fun. So if you love the Sega Saturn, well, guess what? I already did a really cool top 10 of some hidden gems on that system, and also I'm going to work my way through oh, quite a few more Sega Saturn reviews in the future. So until later, I'll see you again, guys.